The world has been presented with a unique opportunity to adopt new ways of working that enhance well-being for all. With many employees working from home during the pandemic and with hybrid ways of working, employers have glimpsed into the lives of their employees, increasing awareness of the variety of pressures, responsibilities, environments and conditions that they are working within. Today we hear from Santander employees who advocate different support networks within the business to promote inclusivity and to create a safe space for all. Our culture promotes inclusion and belonging, prioritises and supports well-being and develops our people's skills. The role of leadership is crucial for promoting well-being and inclusion and is a key factor in ensuring mental health and well-being for all our colleagues across Santander. In 2020, we set out our next three-year inclusion and belonging strategy called Everyday Inclusion. A key ingredient to our inclusive and thriving workplace is our eight employee-led diversity networks. They consider intersectionality, providing a safe space for colleagues to share their lived experiences and receive targeted communications within a digital community space that is a vital source of support. Managers have seen the benefit of working in a more human, relational way appreciating the intersectionality that each employee brings to the role. We have implemented new ways of working and supporting practices around mental health and training to employees in partnership with MIND, allowing mental health to become part of a normal conversation and also encouraging managers to discuss it in their one-to-ones. We have reduced stigma by creating a culture of open and honest communication, empowering colleagues to speak up when they aren't feeling their best and to get the support that they need. We are proud that we have a culture of well-being that is recognised by colleagues at all levels. Last year, we increased our key well-being engagement metric in our global engagement survey by 13 points for our commitment to ensuring that colleagues feel their well-being is valued, as well as they are supported each day. To measure our approach to well-being, we have in place a monthly well-being dashboard, which shows us the key well-being metrics across the organisation. This takes into account our preventative measures, such as our mental wellbeing app or wellbeing hub, and interventions like our chat counselling or employee assistance programme, and also looks at things like suicide prevention and also our employee assistance programme counselling measures. It also looks at the overall mental health absence across the organisation. This dashboard really helps us to understand the sentiment of wellbeing, as well as the uptake of our key initiatives so that we can really identify focus areas for improvement. It's important that we also listen to the voice of the colleagues. So we also run regular surveys to give our employees the chance to tell us in their own words how we can best support them. And we've held regular pull surveys to really understand our employees' sentiment and well-being, where we're doing things well and where we can improve our support. It's been even more crucial to use this data to create action plans to offer additional initiatives and interventions where it will most be impactful to support our colleagues. Our Embrace Network exists to provide leadership and support and insight on LGBTQ plus related matters for our colleagues and our members because we believe that everyone should be able to be their whole selves at work. We think that that's not possible unless you're able to create a fully supportive and inclusive work environment. You talk to people about their preschool and kindergarten experience, we all sort of learn these same rules, right? Like, speak up when someone's doing something that you don't like, uh, talk straight, be kind to people. These same behaviors that we talk about in Santander, making sure that you're actively listening to your colleagues. And if somebody comes to you and says, you know, I've got a problem or I've got a challenge, not just saying, oh yeah, okay, I, I hear you, fine. But actively listening to that, supporting your colleague. And we've got a number of channels that you can go to um, for support through your line management, um, through HR. I like that there's, there's choice uh, in how you want to raise an issue. And honestly, if I felt I wasn't being listened to, the world would know about it. <laughs> The Mental Wellbeing Network aims to help colleagues develop and maintain positive mental well-being 
and empower them to speak up and talk openly about their well-being. Through my own journey and involvement in the network, it has allowed me to be more open and honest about how I feel on a day-to-day basis and reach out to the support that is available to colleagues. Through the network, we've been able to implement many more virtual events, host safe space sessions where colleagues can come together and openly talk in a confidential environment. We aim to promote well-being from all sorts of aspects, such as making use of the quiet hours that have been implemented to encouraging colleagues in taking a break and getting some fresh air, and most importantly, logging off at a reasonable time where colleagues can get some downtime. One thing I have learned is that it's okay to not be okay. And if you can recognize the type of day you are having, and if needed, are able to get the support you need, or just want someone to talk to, you're already heading in the right direction. So the aim of the Families and Carers Network is to bring together anyone who feels they want to share or learn from the experience of others in a similar situation. And it's for parents, grandparents, partners, those looking to adopt or foster, those struggling with fertility, along with colleagues who have caring responsibilities. Most importantly, listening to feedback from colleagues to understand where our family-friendly policies can be improved to help support them in their careers. The networks at Santander are run by colleagues, for colleagues, and that helps people feel they belong by you know, being part of a community and providing a safe space for people to share their experiences. Our networks aim to bring colleagues together and they help us work towards that everyday inclusion and making it a workplace where all colleagues feel they're supported, they belong and they can succeed. Our networks also play a key role in helping colleagues to connect around the moments that matter in their lives and give us all a chance to share our stories. Three of our behaviours at Santander are speak up, talk straight and truly listen. And that actively encourages colleagues across the bank to do just that. There's also a whistleblowing hotline with a dedicated team to support investigations into misconduct. I have to say throughout the pandemic, the bank have been really good at surveying colleagues regularly to understand the effect that lockdown was having on us and understanding our mental well-being. And in response to that, they have provided some really great support. Santander takes a flexible approach to working and encourages everyone to speak to their line manager so they can work the way that best suits them. Thanks to all of our speakers from Santander. This case study really demonstrates the value that employees feel when businesses take an inclusive approach to supporting everyone to thrive. Check out Business in the Community's Everyday Inclusion, What Really Works report, which promotes evidence-based actions employers can adopt to create inclusive working cultures where everyone can speak up and be actively listened to without the fear of negative repercussions. That link's appearing on the screen right now.